What's going on, guys? I'm Combat Craig, and today we're talking about the different VA disability ratings for neck pain. VA disability ratings for neck pain range from 10% to 100%, and then there's breaks at 20, 30, 50%. Your final VA rating for a spinal condition, which is what uh, neck pain falls under, includes your entire spine, right? So your neck, cervical spine, uh, thoracic spine in the middle, and then lumbar spine down low. And it all depends on the frequency, severity, and the duration of your symptoms. And these include things like limitation of range of motion and painful motion. So this is how they measure it. They is the uh, VA rater and the CNP examiner. A tool they're going to use on you that they should be using on you, it's called a goniometer. It's this plastic protractor thing. And I lost mine. I got it on Amazon for $6.95. Maybe it's time to buy another one. They should be using that because these are range of motion and range of movement um, measurements, and they're in degrees. So your doctor needs to record them with some kind of instrument because his eyes aren't calibrated, right? When you go to your CNP exam for your neck pain condition, make sure that guy busts out the goniometer, looks like a protractor, and you wanna make sure that he's using it and then he's writing stuff down. He's not just sitting there talking to you. A lot of these CNP exams, they, you know, there's a lot of back and forth and he's absorbing info or ignoring you or in one ear and out the other, something like that. This one needs to be, all right, how far can you move this way? And he's put the goniometer on you and go, okay, that's 14 degrees. You wanna see him like take that measurement and write it down. We'll talk a little bit more about CNP exams later in the video. There is a strategy to filing a VA claim for neck pain, and that includes secondaries. I go more in depth in my boot camp, so get in there. CombatCraig.com, links in the description. VA ratings for neck pain require an accurate range of motion test of the flexion, extension, lateral flexion, and rotation of the head. Let's talk about 100% neck pain VA rating. Unfavorable ankylosis of the entire spine. Ankylosis means the entire spine is frozen. It doesn't move at all. 100% neck pain rating is a very high rating for an orthopedic condition of any kind, much less your neck. But if you have ankylosis of the entire spine, you can't move your spine. It's basically fused together. You have no range of motion. You have no flexion. You have no extension. You have nothing. Unfavorable ankylosis is a condition in which the entire cervical spine, the neck, the entire thoracolumbar spine, which is the mid to upper back, or the entire spine is fixed in flexion or extension, and the ankylosis results in one or more of the following symptoms. You have difficulty walking because of the limited line of vision. You know, you can't really move around, right? Restricted opening of the mouth and trouble chewing because of your spine. Breathing problems, gastrointestinal symptoms, shortness of breath or dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, cervical subluxation or dislocation, or other neurological symptoms caused by nerve root stretching. So that's the 100% neck rating criteria. A 50% rating for the neck and back. Unfavorable ankylosis of the entire thoracolumbar spine, which is T10 to L2, so it covers some of the uh, lumbar spine and thoracic spine. This means your mid and upper back is frozen in an unfavorable condition. You have virtually no range of motion, but you have some. A 30% VA rating for neck pain, unfavorable ankylosis of the entire cervical spine, so your neck, or forward flexion of the thoracolumbar spine, 30 degrees or less, or favorable ankylosis of the entire thoracolumbar spine. This is something that um, is different for you guys. They call it the thoracolumbar spine, and they mix the thoracic spine and the lumbar spine together. So uh, I have a lot of neck problems. I had an anterior discectomy with fusion at C3-4, C4-5. Uh, MRI revealed that I had problems, and then I also have a, a 10 millimeter herniated disc at L5-S1. So I'm used to talking about cervical, thoracic, and lumbar, but the VA calls it 
Thoro Columbar. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's what it is. So another one of those things. If you're used to talking about thoracic and lumbar, now you combine them because that's what the VA does. Yeah. Favorable ankylosis is a condition of fixation of a spinal segment in neutral position at zero degrees. 20% VA disability rating, forward flexion of the thoracolumbar spine greater than 30 degrees, but not greater than 60 degrees. This is why that goniometer comes in, right? Because if it's greater than 30, but not greater than 60, that means it's in the middle of those two. Let's say it's 49 degrees. You don't want the doctor eyeballing that. These are little teeny measurements. So this is where the goniometer comes in. Forward flexion of the cervical spine greater than 15 degrees, but not greater than 30 degrees. Or the combined range of motion of the thoracolumbar spine not greater than 120 degrees. Or the combined range of motion of the cervical spine not greater than 170 degrees or muscle spasm or guarding severe enough to result in an abnormal gait or abnormal spinal contour, such as scoliosis, reversed lordosis, or abdominal kyphosis. A lot of or statements. So you could have this or this or this. So it's very specific and you need to find out um, where you're at, you know, get an MRI. That's the best way. An x-ray isn't going to tell you all this stuff. It'll just tell you what's broken and if it's way off balance or whatever. But an MRI will get in and actually tell you what these things are. And then get a goniometer on yourself and learn this because, you know, if you're like this, but you can only do this or you just need to do this, that could make a difference between a 10 and 30, 50% rating. So it's good to understand how the VA is going to rate your neck pain and then what you have to do to, you know, get that point across. A 10% VA disability for neck pain, forward flexion of the thoracolumbar spine greater than 60 degrees, but not greater than 85 degrees, or... Forward flexion of the cervical spine greater than 30 degrees, but not greater than 40 degrees. Or, combined range of motion of the thoracolumbar spine greater than 120 degrees, but not greater than 235 degrees. Or, combined range of motion of the cervical spine greater than 170 degrees, but not greater than 335 degrees. Or, kind of feels like a chant. <laughs> Muscle spasm, guarding, or localized tenderness not resulting in abnormal gait or abnormal spinal contour. Or vertebral body fracture with loss of 50% or more of the height. And here's something you should pay attention to. The thoracolumbar and cervical spine segments are evaluated separately except when there's unfavorable ankylosis of both segments. And then if that's the case, they'll be rated as a single disability. So understanding what's going on um, in, you know, if you're filing a claim for neck pain, I guarantee you, we're, again, we're going to talk about secondaries, uh, but I guarantee you, um, if you have major cervical issues, you have lumbar issues and you have thoracic issues. So you're going to run into like pyramiding where they're going to rate it as a single disability. And we're not trying to do that. We're trying to uh, be clear and get all the ratings and all the compensation we deserve out of our neck pain rating. Secondary VA disability ratings for neck pain. So let me just talk about mine. Um, I don't have a rating for my neck. It wasn't uh, service related. It was something else. Um, I had surgery on my neck and it failed. And they cut me open right here, I have a little scar, and they go in and squeeze your esophagus aside and grind out the discs in the back and then um, put in cadaver bones and then bolt it all together and then throw your ass in a hard brace for six weeks. That alone's a nightmare. I didn't know, <laughs> I wasn't really prepared for that. I learned how to sleep in the lazy boy. But after that, um, then I, it, it didn't go away. I have this like big knot up here in my shoulder. So not only do I have it in my shoulder, I have constant stiffness. Like I go to the left, I'm a little flexible right now, but like, I can it's just really slow. Like I just move, my neck's locked. Um, 
it causes depression. That's another secondary, right? It's depressing. My neck hurts all the time. I somatic symptom disorder. I hop out of bed going, I wonder how fucked up my neck's going to be today. This is going to be wonderful. Uh, took a lot of painkillers. Those tore me up. That could be a secondary IBS claim. About, I don't know, six months to a year afterwards, I started getting um, numbness in my right hand. So ulnar nerve. It's this finger right here, this finger right here, and half of this one. So during the surgery, there was ulnar nerve damage. How did I know about that? I had an EMG test done, the nerve test. They hook up probes to your fingertips, and I think it was to your elbow and back up here. And like, yeah, dead nerves. Just from a surgery from my neck, I know there's about six or seven secondaries just because of what I know about secondaries. So I wanted to share that with you. And, you know, don't discount anything about secondaries. If your neck is causing you to be depressed or all of a sudden you got migraines or all of a sudden you're blowing mud all over the place or whatever, all of a sudden some other weird part in your body and your other side starts um, acting up, look into it and see if it's a secondary. If it is, you want to get a doctor to create a nexus for you. Many veterans suffer from service-connected neck and shoulder and back conditions, you know. They can affect your back, hips, knees, ankles, feet, arms, mental health, all sorts of things. One common secondary is radiculopathy. What I was describing, uh, I believe, I, I'm not a doctor, or a lawyer, but I believe I have neuropathy. I believe it's peripheral neuropathy, but it could be radiculopathy. As a result of my neck, I have pinching, um, you know, and numbness in my uh, fingers. Doesn't hurt, uh, but it's annoying and it's numb. In my lower back, I get radiculopathy, that pain down my, I can't even like bend over and uh, put socks on when that's, uh, you know, flared up. So I have to get these big ass epidural shots in my back every year and a half or so. Um, so to keep that at bay. So radiculopathy is a good solid one. Peripheral neuropathy is another good one. And those make sense, right? You have problems with your cervical, thoracic or lumbar. And then all of a sudden you just have shooting pain down one or both of your legs, or shooting pain and numbness and tingling down your arms into your fingers. If we look at 38 CFR Part 4, the Schedule for Rating Disabilities, here's a couple diagnostic codes that would apply. Diagnostic code 5237, lumbosacral or cervical strain. This is a generic label for back pain. Diagnostic code 5238, spinal stenosis. The spinal column narrows and uh, presses on the spinal cord or the nerves. Diagnostic code 5239, spondylolisthesis or segmental instability, when a vertebrae slips out of position. Uh, I know a couple of people that have this, like they just like stuff slips out and they need a chiropractor to put them back in. There's a diagnostic code for that. Diagnostic code 5240, ankylosing spondylitis an arthritic disease that causes the spinal joints to freeze in place. Really need to get an MRI to get these things uh, checked out, obviously. Diagnostic code 5241, spinal fusion. The vertebrae are surgically fused together. That's what happened to me. Also, the vertebrae can fuse themselves together, whether you like it or not. That also happens. When you have uh, damage to uh, your vertebrae, they can fuse themselves together. So that's another diagnostic code. Diagnostic code 5235, vertebral fracture or dislocation. The bones of the spine break or slip out of alignment due to a traumatic event like a car accident or something like that. Probably skateboarding too. Any generic spinal bone injury would be coded here. I've got quite a few more diagnostic codes available for you in my boot camp. I provide two live sessions per month. And if you want to talk to me directly, like face to face over the Zoom meeting, you could do that. And then I also provide everybody in boot camp with an email address. 
if you don't want to, uh, you know, talk to me in the YouTube comments. I try to do my best, but obviously um, I'm one person in the YouTube comments. So combatcraig.com. So these six neck and back conditions can often lead to pinched or damaged nerve roots, and that could cause significant pain. That's known as radiculopathy. Radiculopathy is commonly rated as a secondary VA claim, um, as a secondary service connection due to one or more service connected neck, shoulder, back condition. So this is the where the secondaries come in, right? You're already service connected for your neck and it's service connected, whatever the rating is. If you develop radiculopathy or peripheral neuropathy, you could file a secondary claim to your neck and say, hey, I have radiculopathy running down my left leg. It's caused by my neck. It's logical. It makes sense to you. You're going to need a diagnosis of radiculopathy. You're going to need symptoms, like when it flares up and you can't even bend over and put your socks on. And then you're going to need a nexus. You're going to need a doctor to describe that your radiculopathy is due to your neck and it's uh, on a at least as likely as not basis, which means there's a 50-50 uh, chance. That's all veterans need. We have a pretty low standard when it comes to the burden of proof. You're eligible to be rated for both a neck condition, back condition, and radiculopathy secondary to multiple extremities. This is why you need to dig into it. It's important to understand how the VA looks and rates these different disabilities and these different diagnostic codes so you don't run into pyramiding. Pyramiding means when you can't tell the symptoms apart, the VA is just going to lump everything together and give you one rating when you may deserve three or four or at least two. I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Hill and Ponton. If you need an accredited VA disability lawyer to help you with your VA claim, check them out at hillandponton.com. They may be able to help you out with your claim, they may not. It's an option for you. What should I expect at a CNP exam for neck pain? A CNP exam for neck pain involves a series of questions to include a physical exam, diagnostic testing, maybe an x-ray if none's ever been done before, and a range of motion test with a goniometer. That's basically teeing it up. That's, that's what happens in the CNP exam. Here's some common questions that are asked at a CNP exam for neck pain. Does the veteran have a diagnosis of a neck condition? Of course you do, because we've been talking about this forever. Diagnosis, symptoms, nexus. If you don't have all three of those, you have no claim. You're going to get denied. So yes, I do have a diagnosis. What's the history, including onset and course, of the veteran's cervical spine condition? You know, when did it start? If it's a secondary condition, it could start any time after that. If it's a direct service connection claim, that means that you're blaming it directly on your active duty service. Words matter. So that's another question. When did it start? How long have you had it? What's going on? Be prepared to answer that one. Does the veteran report flare-ups of the cervical spine? Does it flare up? I know mine does. I can't tell what my flare-ups are going to be. And then this might be a good idea to keep a log. Um, I talk about, there's a there's an app called Migraine Buddy. It's a good log for migraines. But really, when you're dealing with any pain, you should keep a pain log. Because when you're like, you know, do you have flare-ups? Yes. Well, when was the last flare-up? Like you're in a CNP exam all nervous, like, ah, I don't know, like 10 days ago. If you have a log, last flare-up was 10 days ago. Before that, it was 13 days ago. Before that, it was 19 days ago. A log of any kind, spreadsheet, write it on toilet paper, whatever. You could probably track it in migraine, buddy. Keep a log when you're dealing with anything that has to do with flare-ups. Mental health is included. Just keep a log. Keep a log of all your pain and all your problems. They're gonna be checking the frequency, duration, and characteristics of your flare-ups. So there's you now. You may be having a flare-up at the CNP exam. Typically that doesn't happen. Um, but they should ask you about it. If they don't, make sure you start talking about it because you wanna talk about your worst day. If you're feeling great, which you shouldn't be in a CNP exam, you want to be talking about yesterday or 
a week ago, whenever your worst day was. Does a veteran report having any functional loss, functional impairment of the joint or extremity being evaluated on the questionnaire? Is it limited or not limited to repeated use over time? So if you have functional loss, the doctor's going to ask you to describe that in your own words. You should be prepared to talk about this. Is there evidence of pain? If yes, select all that will apply, right? Weight bearing, non-weight bearing, active motion, passive motion. Active motion is, you know, moving your neck. Passive motion is just sitting there. Um, on rest, is, does it hurt when you rest? Yes, when I lay in bed. Non-movement. So they're going to be checking, you know, if you're just standing up, moving around. If you're standing up, not moving your neck around. Or if you're resting, like laying down, does it hurt there? So they're going to be asking questions like that and filling these things out for you. Be prepared. Get the DBQ for neck pain and study it because these questions are coming at you. Does procured evidence, statements from the veteran suggest pain, fatigability, weakness, lack of endurance, or incoordination, which significantly limits functional ability with repeated use over time. This is where you, you put your uh, personal statement in, talking about your disability before you file your claim. You do all your medical evidence at the beginning. You don't do it halfway through. You already hit the submit button. Now you got to wait for them to make a decision. You don't get to fix it. Fix it and do it right the first time before you hit the submit button. So they're going to be looking at your uh, personal statement. You don't need to write a book. Yes, I have weakness. You know, I combat Craig. My life fucking sucks. I can't move. I'm in pain all the time. I can't walk. I can't lay down. I can't do anything I like doing. And I could barely move my neck around. That would cover about six or seven of them. And I could get that done in two sentences. Write more if you have to, but you know, your words will be used against you. This is an example. The CNP examiner is going to be looking in there at your personal statement and see if that matches up with the story that you're saying right now in front of them. Your story. You may just call it a disability. That's fine. Call it whatever the fuck you want. It's your story. You better have your fucking story straight before you go into that CNP exam or he's going to tear you apart and you're going to be inconsistent. Memorize your story. Don't mix up and have three different stories. Don't mix this with that and the other thing. Get one story, stick to it, and then you won't have to worry about it. It's consistent in your personal statement. It's consistent when you talk to any doctor. VA Raider goes through and looks up any medical record. Story's the same. Pain's an eight. Always an eight. Never a seven. Always an eight. Or whatever. They're going to write down if you're being examined during a flare-up. Are you having one or not? Tell them. Um, does the veteran have localized tenderness? He might, you know, touch you. Don't let him move you. Don't let him start cranking on your neck. Is this tender? Kind of like a fibromyalgia test or something. You know, do you have muscle spasms of the spine? Does the veteran have any other additional contributing factors of a neck or shoulder disability? You know, does it interfere with sitting, standing, um, laying down, atrophy, swelling, deformity, less movement than normal, more movement than normal, your movement's weaker than normal? Does the veteran have muscle atrophy? I know for sure I have that. Do you? Does the veteran have radicular pain or any other symptoms uh, due to radiculopathy? You either do or you don't. Again, uh, objective medical evidence is best. There's no better um, uh, medical evidence for radiculopathy than getting an MRI, having a doctor say, I see it and I'm going to jam a big ass epidural in your back and I'm going to do it four times. Um, that, you know, there is no like uh, slam dunks with the VA, but if you're going for radiculopathy pain, get those shots before you file it and definitely before the CNP exam, because it's kind of hard to say, yeah, he's full of shit and doesn't have pain. Well, why would I be getting a five inch needle jammed in my back, dick? So get that. Objective medical evidence is key here. MRIs, shots. Uh, meds too. Do you use any assistant devices? Do you use a wheelchair, brace, crutches, cane, walker, something else? I'm going to ask you about that. It comes down to range of motion, functional impairment, and they're trying to measure how much this disability is affecting you. That's where your rating is going to come out of. 
they're going to use the goniometer on you to see how much you're moving around. So if you can't move around like me, yeah, I mean, if I like crank my neck, I could kind of like move my body and my neck, but you don't need to do that for the CNP examiner. How far can you move your neck? He's like, like if I do that, you notice I change my, sh or I move my shoulders because my neck just, I can't go much farther than that. If I'm moving my body and trying to make this guy happy, you're fucking yourself up with the rating, 100%. Keep that in mind. Watch what you say to these guys. Remember that neck pain causes a lot of things. Don't forget about the depression or any other mental health condition you have. Somatic symptom disorder. Uh, which is like a lifestyle impact claim, you know? You don't even want to get out of bed because you don't know how bad your neck's going to suck. Migraines. Anything that pops up that happened after this neck thing, you need to look into it. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.